City of Milton Common Council meeting on Tuesday, May 6th, 2014 at 7.06 p.m. I appreciate everyone's patience as we uh, did a little class photo. Uh, item uh, number one is to call to order and confirm appropriate meeting notice. Uh, the agenda was posted at Dave's Ace Hardware, Milton Piddly Wiggly, and the Shaw Municipal Center. Thank you very much. Agenda item two this evening is to welcome all citizens and address any questions or concerns that are not on tonight's agenda. Seeing none, we'll move on to item three, which is an introduction from Bill Mears from uh, Coldwell Banker Commercial McGuire Mears and Associates on their pr proposed work to market the city of Milton owned properties in the Crossroads Business Park. trade show in uh, Las Vegas in May. She tells me it's the main retail show. <laughs> I'm assuming it. No, I know it is. <laughs> it really is. Uh, it is where all of the retailers and, uh, and the uh, tenant representatives uh, show up every May, and it's quite a, quite a large event that she'll be attending. Uh, but to keep us tuned in to what's happening uh, on the retail front, and also to uh, meet with people opportunities that are market for Bob. So she's here this evening. We'll make sure you see who she is because she'll be very much involved with the retail side of things. I spend most of my time with industrial and office um, and uh, that I'll be focusing on the industrial uh, vacant land anything else I can do to help out with industrial. We, have, we already have some listings in town. Mandy represents uh, the owner of the, uh, the Piggly Wiggly uh, Milton Strip Center. Uh, we also represent small building uh, in that same uh, prop at that same property, and also some vacant land on Arthur, which I've been involved with over a number of years. So that's a little bit about uh, me. Uh, that's who I am. Uh, I wondered if anybody had any questions this evening uh, of me or of the proposal. Any questions from the council? Um, I have a question. How many municipalities do you perform this service for right now? No, we, we don't. You know, we, we, uh, <coughs> I, we spend most of our time, we, we basically represent private sector interests. Uh, my background uh, for about 25 years was, was in economic development. I was kind of like a James Otterstein. I, I never worked in the public sector. I worked in uh, for economic development groups, and so I've been involved working with municipalities for you know, a long, long time. But actually, representing them as a broker, I, no, we don't. I mean, we work with the city of Janesville. We work with the city of all the time, but we don't represent their properties. Good question. 
Good. Anything, Jerry? Thank you very much for being here tonight. Well, thank you. And uh, like I said, we're excited about what we did with the audio and uh, look forward to what we're doing. We're looking forward to getting started. Thank you very much. Agenda item four is the approval of the consent agenda. A second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item five is old business, discussion and possible action on a welcome to Milton sign quote. Jerry. Thank you, Mayor. As uh, outlined in your council packet, uh, we did receive the designs back from Lacrosse Signs and as authorized by the council with input from the Chamber of Commerce's ad hoc sign committee. Uh, we did change the sign desi design uh, to elevate the sign and to make it um, less uh, demonstrative in the bottom with respect to masonry and with our objective is to get over that eight foot chain link fence that out, that's out on that property known as the Art Donaldson property, which was the, uh, the most preferred site for that welcome to Milton sign. Um, Lacrosse came back with that design. A copy of it is attached in your pocket or in your packet. Uh, and the uh, cost uh, estimate for that sign, what they have proposed as a cost, is uh, twenty four thousand nine ninety five. Uh, that is under the statutory requirement uh, for which uh, it would have to be publicly bid. Um, if you would like to see uh, additional quotes, that is something that staff can certainly uh, direct. Um, However, obviously, our work with lacrosse to date has been very specific and very targeted um, due to the fact of your, um, the existing direction was to have them design and engineer and get it ready for bidding. Um, now that that process has changed because of the fact of the elevation and the different materials associated with building it, it would not legally be required for bid, but you could still direct that it be bid based on the cost of the project. Specifically tonight, we are talking about the sign that is raised up on two pylons. That is correct. Correct. So the 24000 and some change, that's the city of Milton will pay all of that, or is there that $10,000 still floating around out there? Or I can't remember. Uh, great question. The $10,000 was uh, purposed for an electronic messaging center. And so... Um, the good news is in what is, um, and again, without compromising the city's um, exact dollar amount for bidding and it, should you choose to do that or for negotiating with sign companies, the, the reduction in cost of this sign um, creates greater budget capacity to do more for other signage, um, such as the smaller Welcome to Milton signs, one of which could include an electronic messaging center. Uh, I received correspondence in... Um, early April from the uh, Milton Community Fund um, that the vote taken by the Milton Board, uh, according to Jane Maldonis, who sent this correspondence, was, uh, it was the board's intent that the Welcome to Milton sign include a electronic messaging center. That was the first correspondence that I had received um, from them about that grant. Um, I had received a telephonic communication saying, you know, hey, please come to this presentation and that. But the, the specifics and the parameters of the grant. Um, that, that correspondence also did, however, say that the Milton Fund was committed to working with the city to see the project um, happen. Um, and if it was going to happen, it just made it without an electronic messaging center, it would just need to go back to the Milton Fund board for consideration according to their rules and bylaws. So big welcome sign. When we drove that, uh, Alderperson Lauder, Mayor Frazier was there. Um, our driving that at 65 miles an hour. Um, Tony Hickey from Lamar, well, it was a very windy day. They brought a, a big truck out and they were holding up vinyl. And um, you're traveling so quickly, um, it would be very difficult to see an electronic messaging center at that site location. Um, however, at other sign locations, which would be you know subject to this council's approval, um, the smaller signs um, were at slower speeds, maybe 25 or 35 miles an hour either 59, maybe High Street, maybe John Paul, maybe Parkview Drive, some of those heavier traveled roads. Um, you could certainly put an electronic messaging sign there, that a smaller one, it would be much more easily seen and easily um, be able to be read because you're traveling at slower speeds. That's a very long-winded answer, I'm sorry, but it's, that's the complexity of the EMC thing. And you know, in driving by when they were holding their sail up in the wind, 
basically you just didn't see the sign that had been proposed and that kind of cleared the cobwebs out of our thinking. I mean, you're going to spend that much money on what? Right. It just was not visible. Right. Um, some things that they told me um, that James Spuchel from La Crosse told me about the sign so that you and, and the rest that are involved in this project are aware. Um, this sign is uh, aluminum, so it's steel, and it's all painted on. Um, there's something that they could do to uh, reduce the sign cost, and that's make it what they refer to as a seven-year vinyl, um, meaning that you know it would be aluminum, and then it would kind of like be a billboard-type material, and then about every seven years you'd have to replace it. This is um, a fully painted-on sign. It does not have um, interior illuminated letters. That was something that we had talked about at first. We'd ask them to price that out. That would, if that's something that you would like to see, um, that would raise the cost to thirty-five thousand dollars. This sign is um, one with exterior illuminated. Yeah, and that's how this would be. Is the vinyl gonna fade? <coughs> this one is. There's no vinyl. vinyl. Yeah, this, this is all aluminum vinyl. and painted on. Yeah. It's never going to be needed to be repainted or... As um, what he described to, to me was a, a weather resistant because it will get, you know, sun and snow and, and all those other sorts of things. So they said it would last between 10 and 20 years before it would need to be, have something done to it. Then um, what would be done to it? Um, and would they, do they provide that service or we just... We, we would have to do it. We would have to do it ourselves. They do provide the service, but for a, for a cost, fee. yeah. So how will you be painting? <laughs> <laughs> in his in his retirement. Yeah. <laughs> okay, recommended action today. If you do like the proposed uh, design and the cost. Um, we'd like to get it installed as quickly as possible uh, in conjunction with a lot of the other sign work that we're uh, pursuing. Um, so the recommendation would be to approve um, the design and the cost and order the uh, sign to be built and installed. And this is the sign that the Mackett Sign Committee is happy with? You asking me? Yes. Thank you. Jerry, can you talk about the discussion at the, at the showing of the previous thing? Yes. Um, there was a consensus that the EMC was not best served for that location and that there was a desire of those in attendance at the viewing to elevate the sign and create it in a billboard kind of fashion. So the sign design that was created, I did share it electronically with chamber ad hoc sign committee members um, and it included the dialogue that this would be on the agenda tonight for council discussion um, and so it was made the design was made with cha chamber ad hoc sign committee input that was taken in when it was viewing but there has as mark had indicated no formal viewing um, by their board or endorsement of it um, in, in large part and without sounding um, cold about this this is an all city. This is now an all city money thing, and this is an all do decision. Um, so I think it's very appropriate that, given the amount of work and energy and investment that the chambers ad hoc sign committee has put into this, that we share the discussions and say, hey, here's kind of where we're at, and this is what we're doing. But um, these are all city dollars uh, for this part of this project. Oh, that's a good sign. <laughs> Oops. Dan, did you kick that? I think so. <coughs> really? You got a new it's always right under my feet. Is the motion going to include just the one sign? Correct. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve that sign. And I'll make a motion that we approve this sign. And go out for bids. There are no bids required. Right. There are no bids required. Right. That's always under. And there, there's one other piece to the recommendation, if, if you will notice that, and that is with respect to the location, 
um, I would encourage the, agree the ordering of the sign to be contingent on the agreement of an easement um, for the property. Because I don't want us to order the sign, have a $25,000 steel sign, and then all of a sudden some reason something would fall through with the agreement. And the, um, the new property owner, who is um, Tony Hickey, was at the last plan commission. He's purchasing the property from our Donaldson, and he has verbally agreed to an easement, but we have nothing in writing. And so I would encourage us to have that in writing and then uh, execute the agreement. And when will that closing be? Um, he said it was going to be in the first part of May. Um, and so I wanted to see where you folks were at on this. He knows that this is on the agenda. Um, I requested a meeting with him. And we'll either meet this week or next. But once he knows that we're going to do something with the sign, and then that kind of triggers the, okay, now we need to you know, do the easement thing. We've had um, some email correspondences back and forth about tentative arrangements. So that process has started in anticipation that some sort of a sign thing was going to happen. Um, and they would just need to be finalized and then presented to you for your approval. I'll change my motion to include the easements and exclude the uh, going out for bids. Motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? How long, if we approve this, how long will it take for them to get work on this? The, the biggest hiccup will be getting the easement um, negotiated. Then, uh, what was the t production timeline? Six weeks? Six to eight weeks. Um, I had pressed him, and he said if we order the sign in May, it is possible that they could have it up by the 4th of July. Um, and that's the target date that we're kind of shooting for. It'll be at the same time a lot of other exciting things happening in our city, the great celebration that we have that time of year, grand opening of the new facility, the sign. Including additional signage, potentially. Right. Yep. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item six is new business. Uh, item A was an informational update from the YMCA of Northern Rock County and their scholarship program. Uh, Dr. Den Boer has had um, a, a personal situation come up and so he's not able to be with us, so we'll table that for now. Item B is an informational update on the transition to new facilities for the police department, municipal court, and city hall. Uh, as outlined in the memo in your packet that went to the uh, city's management team, and then we'll go to all employees uh, this week in payroll. Uh, the third week of May, uh, Arrowhead will, uh, after, <coughs> after this last council meeting, uh, the city's Department of Public Works will vacate this part of the lower level of Shaw and get everything all cleaned up and ready for the Arrowhead Library Central offices to move into the lower level. So that will happen. Uh, and then... Um, the fourth week in May, uh, Arrowhead moves in. So uh, the May, the week of uh, Memorial Day, those four days, Arrowhead will be moving into this cleaned out space. Um, June 2nd, Arrowhead opens up their operations here in the lower level of Shaw. So all the final things that are being worked out, um, fiber optic has been hooked up here through Arrowhead. So this building will have fiber optic ca capacities through um, what's I believe called WISNET. It's a, a library system that they have and they offer that to them. So our library will, for lack of a better term, kind of be a free rider on that and an improved network capability for them using that internet connection. Um, so Arrowhead Library Central Offices will be in here June 2nd. All of the council and committee meetings during the month of June will take place in the upper level of the Shaw uh, building, um, in the back of where City Hall is, where the school district central offices used to be. And so we'll make sure that we communicate that on the city blog, the website. Uh, we'll ask for some help from James from the Courier in getting that word out so people know where we're going to be meeting for the two June council meetings and the June plan commission meetings. Um, as indicated in the memo, municipal court will not be held during the month of June of 2014. So initial appearances and trials will not be held. And that has to do with there will be no recording capability in the upper level of Shaw during that month. Um, the other thing is for them to move all those offices up. initial intakes at municipal court will take place at the new facility. Um, so what does that mean in a nutshell? It means your last meetings here um, of the council and court in the lower level of Shaw will be this month. Um, they'll temporarily move up to the upper level of Shaw for the month of June and we are planning on being operational in the new facility um, <coughs> Subject to how you as a council want to structure those council meetings because there's five Tuesdays during the month of July. 
I would um, ask in advance that that first week in July, given the fact that we're getting acclimated and that, you know, Fourth of July is a pretty big deal in Milton, that we might look to a July 15th first council meeting. But that's ultimately your decision. Great. Any questions on that? Exciting stuff. A lot of uh, a lot of work. Howie and his staff have already been doing a lot. Michelle doing a lot of the final touches on ordering things. Uh, Dan and his staff. And so it's a very coordinated effort. A lot of things going on. Um, I did meet with the Rock County Sheriff's Office this week. Uh, we are going to be um, in a conversation I had with Brett because we're not utilizing a moving company to save expenses. Our public works seasonal employees. And then we're also engaging uh, the recap workers from Rock County who are going to assist us in moving. So there'll be two workers um, here and then two at each of the sites that are moving. Uh, they're under constant supervision and they'll be you know, moving boxes and loading trucks and unloading trucks and um, it should be an exciting time. It's highly probable that I'll be dressed a little less formally because <laughs> you've probably been moving uh, boxes and doing some stuff, but um, it's, a, it's a pretty exciting time. Uh, no, we are vacating the facility for them. We're getting it move-in ready. Um, and then as part of our lease agreement, we had negotiated a moving allowance for them, a one-time moving allowance. They're also, ironically, using some recap workers. So uh, I'm anticipating that that bill will not be um, very expensive. But we did give them a, a one-time moving allowance of up to $5,000 as part of their uh, recruitment to bring them here. Um, they had an opportunity to stay in their existing location uh, for the almost the exact same price, and they chose the, the Milton location for a variety of different reasons their board did. And so I think, you know, that's something we as a city can be pretty proud of, that the, um, the hub of library operations for all of Rock County will be here um, next month. Pretty, good. pretty quick. Before we move on, I'm going to just deviate a bit and ask uh, Representative Janice Ringhand, who's a candidate for the 15th Senate District, to come up and, uh, and speak to the, uh, the council. Thank you. I'm just going to pass around some cards quick. I might do that. Well, you took half my speech already, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am Janice Ringhand. I'm from Evansville, and I am representing the 45th Assembly District, which in Rock County includes Evansville, Orfordville, and most of the city of Hawaii, and in Rock County, Albany, Broadhead, and Judah, and the rural counties, rural townships around there. And prior to being elected to the State Assembly, I was the mayor of Evansville and served on the City Council for a total of 11 years. So I definitely appreciate everything that you do here. I'm very familiar with the process, and during those years, I served on every committee in the city except for historic preservation. So I've got quite a bit of experience and background in uh, local government. But um, in my uh, professional life, I did 25 years of small business accounting, 17 years ago I was with my brother-in-law at a meat processing plant in Evansville, and four years in our farmers cooperative, and three years for a nonprofit that actually built our senior center in Evansville. And we raised $2.5 million in the private sector to build that, that uh, facility, and it's very active and very welcome in the community today. But I was the first in there project. And my husband and I have been married for 45 years. Our two children and five grandchildren all live in Evansville, so it's nice to have family that close by. And uh, I've been very active in the community. I served on the Stoughton Hospital Board of Directors for eight years. I currently serve on the Rock County Literacy Connection. And we've been very proactive with energy, renewable energy products, projects in Evansville, so I've been a major part of that role also. And have belonged to several other civic groups who go on and on, but that's, that's enough. <laughs> so um, at the state level, I serve on workforce development, veterans affairs, urban and local affairs, small business development, and government operations. So I'm looking forward to running for the seat that Senator Collin is retiring from at the end of this year. And I will be out in your community knocking on doors, as I was doing today. So talk about dressing informally. <laughs> Today was very important to me, knocking on doors, you don't wear high heels. <laughs> but I thank you for allowing me to stop in today and just introduce myself so that you've got a face to the name. And uh, if you ever have any questions, my contact information is on the cards that I handed out. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I know you've got a long agenda, so I don't want to tie you up very long. And I appreciate your taking my late entrance. I left another meeting late. Best plans never seem to work. Representative Ringhan fell victim to the Whitewater Common Council's uh, agenda. So, um, 
and it's no problem at all. But one of the benefits of running for uh, partisan office is you get to knock doors in a little bit warmer weather than yes. you do uh, for, for local <laughs> elections. <laughs> all right. Anyone have any questions for Representative Brinkham? Okay, thank you very much for coming down. Thank you for having me. Bet. We'll move on quickly to uh, item D, which is discussion and possible action, approving the change orders for the new police department, municipal court, and city hall. Did we miss one? I don't think we did. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, let's do D and then we'll go back to C. So I have to say it twice. Okay, uh, as outlined in your council packet, there are some change orders that were associated with the, uh, the new building project. Um, the overwhelming majority of those have been directly associated with items that have been found in the old building. Uh, none of them have been associated with the design of the new building. So things that were unforeseen, previously discussed, like the insulation in the attic, uh, for which you approved the uh, agreement for us to work with Captain Clean to have that removed. Uh, there were some things with um, an unlevel floor that needed to be addressed, as well as some HVAC that when the insulation was uh, removed and the uh, ceiling tiles in the old building were removed, uh, needed to be addressed. Uh, staff sits through construction meetings every two weeks to get updates as to what's happening with the building, what's going right, what's going wrong. Um, the good news is, is that in that information, there's more going right with the project than there is going wrong. <coughs> Uh, and that the change orders uh, still have us um, now less than seven weeks out from project completion, um, still within the contingency budget uh, and still on schedule and on time. Um, so all totaled, uh, those change orders of 25,228 uh, outlined in their consideration. Uh, the contingency budget of uh, 5% is still within that. We're still within that threshold on the project, and staff is recommending approval of the change orders. Jerry uh, it was fairly charitable in his discussion of the uh, issues that we found in the existing building. Um, there are things that nobody would ever anticipate finding. There was HVAC that was held up by walls as opposed to any sort of uh, um, be a, being affixed to the structure. Uh, the floors were apparently poured after the walls were installed, um, so they were they were low. Uh, if you went in there, you would see you can see where all the walls were because there's ridges where the the floors were poured afterwards. Um, it had to be fixed and it had to be done then to stay on schedule. So the recommended action tonight is to approve the change orders to the building project as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Back to C is discussion and possible action on approval of a five-year contract with charter for fiber optic internet connectivity for the new police department, municipal court, and city hall building. Thank you, Mayor. As part of our uh, installing the infrastructure necessary to operate out of the new facility, uh, we learned from charter that the building was set up for its last user as a fiber optic user uh, right now. We have an electrical internet connection, so this is obviously a substantial upgrade in service to us, and that would have fiber optic network uh, connectivity. What does that mean for us operationally? It means during power outages and things like that that we um, may not, uh, or electrical storms, we would still have internet connectivity. Um, obviously, electrical power outage, the computers that we plug in and things like that may not work, but ironically, the internet still would. Um, so. Um, that's a, it's a big upgrade, I know, uh, from all of you as we transition to electronic packaging from time to time we've had issues with connecting to our iPads. Uh, this should help alleviate that issue uh, as well as provide a much more sustainable internet connection for all of our operating departments. Uh, just this last week as we went through the server project and the upgrading, we really realized the, um, the challenges that staff experiences when there's downtime with no internet connectivity because so much of our jobs are tied to that now. Um, police department records management system, our utility billing software, all of that stuff. Uh, sounds strange, but it's actually less harmful to us when the phones go down than it is on the internet. <laughs> so having that is a critical part to our uh, core operations. The cost of, of doing so for the installation was $1,000, and then but the, the real challenge is um, the ongoing operational cost. Um, it goes up from $150 a month, which is our current connection. Uh, current internet service fee for the for the facility up to uh, $450 a month on a five-year contract. And that's because there's an actual heartbeat that they send through the fiber line to make sure that it's always working. And if there is a problem, 
um, they report to it directly and then they send somebody out to the fiber to fix it and get us back connected. Um, and so uh, there's a higher cost associated with it, um, but it's a much better service. It's a, uh, so it's up to you if, if you want to do it. Staff recommendation is to definitely take advantage of infrastructure that <coughs> not anticipate that the operations of either City Hall or the police department will become less dependent on the internet or less dependent on uh, web connectivity. So uh, I think this is a good move for us and the fact that uh, it's, it's a long-term investment in the city's operations. Um, as indicated in the memo, uh, there's $1,800 that we will have to come up with in the 2014 budget to reflect for this because there will be a $3,600 annual operational uh, increase in expenses associated with this new service because um, it's $300 a month more times that 12 months. Um, this calendar year, uh, we've had some vacant positions uh, when Treasurer Kemper um, resigned. You know, that's taken us a while to do that recruitment, so we'll have some unused wage reserve to cover that fund, uh, to cover that additional $1,800, because we would want the service to start July 30th and go through um, January of 2015. Um, but also, in addition to that, there is value in signing the five-year contract, because then that's a fixed cost for us, and unlike a lot of our contracts, which are less than that, we know that that's going to be the expense for that service for the next five years. So does Charter own all the fiber optic? Is that it? Um, I believe so, but I don't know for sure. They're the, like, the only ones in the game, right? Correct. The fiber is already in the building. Um, if we had to bring the fiber, I quoted out for a couple of clients when I worked for the chamber, and it was eighteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. You can pay it off, you know, over those five years. Having the fiber there is an asset. The question tonight is, is is it an expense that our, that our city um, values enough to to afford it operationally? This year, we certainly can find it thanks to unused wage reserves. Um, the question would be making it a budget priority than operationally moving forward. But certainly the technology is far superior to what we're utilizing now. And they will only do a five-year contract? No, no, they will do less than that, but then there's more cost. Um, that is the greatest value. That is the least expensive amount per month that they could do as on the longest-term contract. I think the five-year makes sense because it, then we know what we need to budget for. And I think we need the upgrade. So I, I would make a motion that we go with the five-year contract. Second. We have a motion and a second. The, uh, just, just to be clear, For the discussion. As uh, Jerry's indicated in his memo to the council, they have not yet submitted a contract. What they have submitted is a proposal. And so the recommended action would be to authorize the staff to request to submit a contract consistent with the proposal be brought back to you for review and approval. They just, yeah, it's just a general yep. proposal right now. I'll make that. I make that motion that Mark just okay. went through. Yeah, and then the, the second goes with it. Yes. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item E Discussion and possible action authorizing the starting wage for part time experienced police officers. Chief Labor. Thank you. Uh, we're currently going through the background process on two part time officers that we're ready to hire. It, saying they passed their backgrounds. But the hiring was done for experienced only officers, meaning they had to have five years of experience to apply. <laughs> and the two candidates uh, both have over 20 years experience in law enforcement in the area. And we are seeking to start them off at the top, top part-time wage, which is $20.08 an hour. Uh, I met with uh, interim treasurer Dan Nelson and he ran the numbers as far as the number of hours they would be expected to work and the amount of funds we have left for part-time officers in our budget and it works out for us to be able to pay 2008 per hour for these officers I'm not so sure if we started them off at $17 an hour that we would even they would even take the job so it's uh, that's what we pay Blaine who's our <coughs> other uh, part-timer and we pay him uh, top wage because he was very experienced and when he came in and we would also not have to pay over ten thousand dollars to train a new person so there are savings associated with it and that's why I'm recommending that we start them off at twenty dollars an hour instead of seventeen 
and what other municipalities in the area start off their experience <coughs> with time officers? Most of them don't do hirings just for experienced part-time officers. They just have their part-time scale and they start them off at a certain wage and then it goes per year. But $20 is not out of the norm for part-time officers in the area. Uh, some counties <coughs> pay a little less for part-time or some pay a lot more. We're somewhere in the middle. Do they have a probationary period? Yes. So is it feasible that we could start them off at a lower wage for the probationary period and then bump them up once they pass their probation? Could, but I, I don't know that they would even take the jobs if we're paying them at $17 an hour. I, I think in order to keep them, we would be better off to pay them the $20 an hour rather than pay 17 because I think if we did, we'd be looking. And I think if they've been in 20 years in law enforcement together already that they have, it's not like a new officer where we need a probationary period. I think they probably have enough experience if their record serves, if their record of 20 years has been all, you know, with no problems. Yeah, we're doing their backgrounds right now just to make sure, but they're currently both employed full-time at other law enforcement agencies. Do they realize that if they, that this would be the high that they start out with? Correct. So they're not, they will not have a problem say two years from now, if there maybe is not an increase that they would expect? I told them this is the top wage that they would start off at, and I don't believe that they feel like they would be getting huge wage increases every year. They know this is where we top out at. Mm -hmm. I didn't discuss years down the road with them, but they do know it's the top wage. And I appreciate what their, you know, I certainly appreciate what their jobs are. It's just that I, I just want to make sure that they understand that you're starting at the top. So don't expect us to just give you a raise next year and increase it that much because you have started on the top. Chief, can you speak about what the addition of these part-time officers would do to staffing? Well, the staffing right now is we have a short one officer that will be full staffed on July 1st when Maiden Breckman comes back. And, but up until then, we only have one part-time officer, and that's Blaine Larson taking shifts. And he is also our 24-hour-a-week code enforcement officer. So we are getting uh, very little code enforcement done at this point. need these two part-time officers to fill our vacancies right now and actually it would save us money because then we wouldn't be paying officers at time and a half. We'd just be paying them their straight wage. So what's the, what's the wage you're recommending? $20.08 an hour. I'll make that motion that we uh, uh, hire the two part-time officers at $20.08 an hour. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? The only thing I would caution the council, and I, I, I agree they should be paid up a good wage. I just, I almost feel like we're spending a lot of money and our, our next budget we're going to have, it's going to cost us more to be in a new building. Our operating expenses next year are going to be more than they are now. And I think we really have to be mindful of that this year when, when we're spending money. So I would just like to, us to be a little bit more cautious. Any further discussion? There's a motion on the floor to authorize the starting wage for experienced part-time police officers at $20.08 per hour. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item F, discussion and possible action, authorizing the possible sale options for vacated wellhouse number three on second lane. We just use the building for very minimal storage. We have maybe five jackers, and most of we use it to store the bikes um, so we you know, find the surplus sale. Um, we still have to mow the yard, maintain it on the building. Um, we kept it for you know, quite a year after we moved to make sure we wouldn't need it for storage. Um, we 
really with the new building is not really anymore. Um, some of the neighbors have, that do have interest in it, in purchasing that, um, some of the, the homes in that area have smaller lots or have very, you know, backyards aren't very deep, et cetera. So um, they've asked, you know, a few times, you know, if, if there's ever the city might be interested in selling that. Uh, and it's come to the point where we really don't need it for a public works function anymore. So it would be a benefit as far as us for not maintaining it. And also, if we did sell it, it could go on the tax roll. Um, Mark has spent some, you know, told us what we should do for how to sell it. It's got various um, things on how to probably advertise it for a month. But um, at the present time, if, if we really could, you know, as, as far as a city property, it doesn't really serve a lot of purpose except for maintenance right now. There's a couple, of, I don't know if you got the pictures of it. It's a brick building. It's not a huge lot, but it could be added on to someone else's and make their lot um, quite a bit nicer or bigger, you know, for a backyard or something for them. Or even for an extra garage and some of those lots that are limited in, you know, as far as having a shed or something, you know, store things in. So if the council would want, we could, we could mark recommendations, put that up for sale, and hopefully one of the neighbors would, you know, be able to purchase it for a, you know, a fair price. Um, th there's really a couple of different options that the council has and then a, a staff recommendation based on the interest from neighbors in the property. Um, one of those options is you could do a sealed bid. The other one is you could list it for sale. And then the third option is a solicit for proposals. Um, staff recommendation is given the neighborhood interest in the par property as solicit for proposals. So we would put something in the paper uh, twice. Um, the statutes, as Mark has indicated, it's in your council packet, the require that uh, we refer this to the plan commission for their comment um, to make sure that they're comfortable with the selling of the city asset because of its, um, its nature. And then also uh, that we would post publicly a solicitation for proposals to acquire the property from the city. It's a little different than a sealed bid so because it would then allow you to evaluate those proposals and make a judgment on, on other than cost because it is something that um, I think you want to make sure that somebody just doesn't come in there and do something with it that maybe you don't necessarily want them to do. Although you might have some limitations after they buy it, you know, subject to the zoning code and things like that. Um, I think out of respect for the neighbors, the solicitation of proposals, A, gives them an opportunity to do so as well as notices to the general public that they could also submit a proposal. <coughs> and then B, um, it helps to ensure a greater level of control over what happens with the property in your review of those proposals for acquisition. At some point, was that property um, taken from another lot to create the well? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's your platform. <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> The only reason I ask is just to point out that at some point it was a part of another lot, and certainly the city paid something to acquire it, but uh, it'd be my hope that through the proposals process we can return it um, to the neighborhood's use, someone's, someone's property, um, instead of um, you know, just hanging on to it for the sake of hanging on to it. Right. So If it could enhance somebody else's property, I think you'd right. be so the recommended action tonight is to authorize staff to solicit offers from interested buyers for the city's former well house on Second Lane uh, from May 14th to June 15th, pending comments and approval from the Plan Commission at their May 13th meeting. Second. second. Okay. We'll get, all right. You got it? All right. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> If you have questions, folks, you can be in touch with Jerry or, or Michelle or anyone. 
Uh, item G is discussion and possible action regarding Historic Preservation Commission request for proposals, memorandum of agreement, and work program with the Wisconsin Historical Society for the National Register of Historic Places nominations. Sure. Mayor, uh, as indicated in the council packet, uh, the Wisconsin Historical Society for the National Register of Historic Places uh, has uh, authorized a $15,000 grant for the uh, city of Milton for four individual properties to be named to the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, the grant builds off that previously um, <coughs> evaluation grant of $18,000 that the Historic Preservation Commission received uh, for the evaluation of potential National Register of Historic Places. Uh, they have identified 12 properties that are potentially eligible to get an additional $15,000 in an MOU for their work to go through the process to submit. It's a reimbursement grant, so there's actually a contractual relationship between the historical, uh, the Wisconsin Historical Society and the city and a uh, consultant from the list of approved consultants to do that work and then submit to the National Historic Registry. So as many as four of those 12 properties would be uh, submitted for consideration and uh, staff uh, has provided to you the, uh, re both the request for proposals, uh, the MOA, which is the Memorandum of, uh, of Agreement, and then the work program as defined by the Wisconsin Historical Society. All are um, subject to your approval, but um, contingent upon our receipt um, of the $15,000 grant from the Wisconsin Historical Society. Historic Preservation Commission has done a lot of work on this, and I think that this is something that we as a council need to back up. So I'll make the motion to approve the request for proposal memorandum of agreement and work program with the Wisconsin Historical Society for National Register of Historic Places and nominations. A second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in, all those in. Sure. Sure. Okay, with the motion? Yes. Okay, with the second. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item H, discussion and possible action authorizing a policy change in delinquent water bill collection operating practices. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to ask uh, Director Robinson to talk a little bit about this, and then I'll do the, the follow-up from it. to get all those notices sent out. Um, and then by the time people get the notices and going through the shutoffs, there's probably five or six <coughs> people that actually go to the houses and actually do turn the water off. Um, anyways, a lot of these, as soon as the water shut off, they would pay the money. Or in some instances, they can't even turn the water off because sometimes one, on a duplex situation, one person will pay and the other won't, so you can't turn either one of them off. So there's a lot of various situations where we spend a lot of time where we actually can't turn the water off or it's still hard to collect money. And we do all this by the delivery of those blue notices on people's doors or sometimes in person they hand it right to a person on business in some situations. Um, what we would like to do to change this to save labor time, it doesn't really save any money, it just reallocates the labor um, to do some of the other things that we have to do. time that the bill goes out that their tenants not paying the water bill so they know ahead of time you don't just you know when you get your taxes get a huge water bill and we're never notified of it uh, <coughs> but the main reason we like to do this is just to save some labor we have two guys in the truck going around delivering these notices and it's sometimes it's a public relations thing to do people drive by and see a pink bag on somebody's door and you know it's, it's kind of a stigma about that or the businesses don't like getting delivered from the attic place. We don't have a lot of customers around. So um, there's also certain places we can't turn water 
really wanted to get all of his money so that his work was going to be here. So sometimes he shut down for his own good. So um, you don't have to have that many people that never is not big. But also the fact that each Delta could take care of somebody who calls their trust one thing, they would go on that. Um, so they could collect some of the money that way also. So um, it's possible we might just have to switch into this this year. It would save us some time to schedule and see what it does for this year. Yeah, Mayor, one of the things that I, I don't think that the general public always knows, and that is um, primarily because I think Director Robinson and his staff don't spend a lot of time telling people about the work that they do because they're too busy doing it. And that the city has 2,538 water meters that it's responsible for. Do you know how, busy, how big our water utility department is in terms of its staff? Two people. Two people are responsible for 2,538 water meters. They're responsible for 327 hydrants. They're responsible for when a water main break or a water main issue comes about. Um, and these guys, mind you, by the way, they're also snow plowed truck drivers and they have all their other responsibilities that they have to do. So when the state of Wisconsin comes along, and although I will say this is an environmentally friendly appropriate law, it is in addition to a series of unfunded mandates that periodically comes down from the federal government to the state government down to the local municipalities. But these folks now have to do cross-connection inspections, meaning to inspect all of these water meter connections, the things that connect to our utility infrastructure. So 2,538 of these things to make sure that there's no backflow getting into the system. Again, environmentally a good thing, but there's one more thing that they have to do. So somebody's water meter is going slow and that's negatively impacting the revenue stream because they're getting more water than they actually, or they're, they're taking more water out, but the meter's not reading properly. And they're supposed to be checking these meters every five to 10 years, replacing them every 20. Um, this is something that came up in our utility discussion in the meeting we had last week because, um, and it's a theme you're gonna hear a lot in the upcoming development of the 2015 budget, and that is um, repurposing of staff time. Um, what are the things that we, don't have to do anymore because of the new things we have to do. Um, and so uh, from our perspective, it's not only a good thing in terms of client relations, it's a better use of staff time. Currently staff spent, you know, goes to anywhere between 50 to 70 water shutoffs every two months. And so that's one or two, you know, people from our utility department going out and hanging out a door hanger, putting it on there, and then following it up in 48 hours with a wrench saying we're turning off your water if you don't pay. Um, it's not a particularly pleasant experience for either party involved. And in the end, the statutes allow us to collect the money anyway. Um, and so I think this is a great recommendation from the utility department. And I would encourage the council to endorse it. Discussion on that? I know there was some at the Public Works Committee meeting. I'll make the motion to authorize a policy change in delinquent water bill collection operating practices. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item I is discussion and possible action reviewing and providing comment on the drafted ordinance to revise Chapter 78 that would permit more than one sign on a lot in non residential zoned districts. Thank you, Mayor. This is a uh, policy recommendation that, in part, comes about of our request to place a sign on a property that may end up having more than one sign uh, and is one of a series of potentially um, recommended changes in a discussion that I know Mayor Frazier and I are gonna have with the Plan Commission at their May 13th uh, City Council, or I mean, Plan Commission meeting. Um, even though we've made some good progress in our sign code, there are still, in my professional opinion, and in talking to some business owners, either electronically or in person this week, um, <coughs> we need to do better. And we need to um, improve the sign code so that uh, businesses can promote their business with more than just the standard or more rigid rules of the 1968 creative code that was updated once in 2006. And even though there was an awful lot of work put into that effort, um, I think one of the things that um, we have 
potentially underestimated was not only the drive around impact of the Highway 26 bypass, but the elevation component of the <coughs> Highway 26 bypass. So at the May 13th uh, Planning Commission meeting, I know Mayor Frazier and I are going to have some short term and some long term recommended considerations for the Plan Commission because the sign code is governed by Chapter 78, which is our zoning code. And, uh, and bring that to them for their consideration, not only on current enforcement practices, but on long-term changes to the code that would make it easier for businesses to uh, promote their business both on-site and off-site. And we've made some of those changes um, already, but we need to make more. And this is one of those examples which would allow us to have more than one freestanding sign uh, on a property, uh, which right now is currently prohibited. and is a big enough parcel, a one and a half acre parcel, for which the um, proposed sign, or the proposed owner is going to come to you as part of the easement deal and ask for the ability to place a sign there as well. Um, it's a public policy issue. It's for one for you to discuss and see if they, you want to do it. But um, staff thinks it, it makes sense, given the fact that if there's an acre of separation, that um, having more than one sign on a lot is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. I, I think it makes sense because if you have businesses with corner lots where roads go both ways, you know, some, some people might not even know a business is there if they only can have a sign on the other road. So I, I, I personally have no problem with it. I think we should change it. I think that we need to be extremely business friendly at this point in time because of the bypass. We have a lot of businesses that are feeling uh, the pain with losing their traffic. And we also have businesses that can't afford to go out and do all the extra marketing that needs to be done. I think the signing is a way that we can help them out. Now, the question I would have, Jerry, is then do we still control the size of the sign? And Yes. Um, the zoning restrictions pursuant to the district that the property is in governs the size of, of that sign. Um, what this particular change does is it, uh, is it creates the ability for a business to get more than one sign on their lot. Right now it's building and then one on the lot. And this lets them have two um, on the lot. And, um, and that, it also allows for a conditional use to have a third on the lot um, if the uh, size of the lot would permit it. Um, we are going a little bit in reverse order, but because of the urgency of this issue, not only related to uh, the city's objectives, but business objectives who have really been pushing for this, um, that we are bringing it to the council first, because by law it has to go to the plan commission, so this will be on the May 13th plan commission agenda, and then there's public hearings uh, related to the, the zoning change, or the change to the zoning ordinance, and then it would come back to the council. So we kind of wanted to see, as you folks are kind of the end, start with you to see if this meets your policy objectives, then take it back to plan commission on the 13th, then bring it back to you after they review and comment as well. So before are we, we making a motion or we're, we're just? The, end is the plan commission will definitely have an opinion. We want to see it <laughs> first. Well, yes. so no action yeah. on our I, Correct. Yeah, okay. I, think, I, think, I think the change is good and has been needed, especially if we want to attract new businesses and and they need advertising, the fact that so many cars are going around, I, I think we should do it as soon as possible. Item seven is general items. Our next meeting will be May 20th, um, which will be our last council meeting uh, in this space. Uh, I will um, regretfully be in Florida uh, for work. Right. <laughs> so am I going to, am I supposed to shed tears? Um, yeah, I know. Am I supposed to shed tears? Are you going to be here? You need to be here. Are you going to be around? Or are you going to I, that, name? That, no, that date is crossed off. It is, I'm not umpiring that night. I have, I have, have multiple, multiple offers to do. Nice for you to put the council first. Yes, of course. <laughs> President Berwick will be running uh, that meeting. Um, 
Item B is uh, Mayor and all the Wizards reports. Any and all the Wizards reports. Um, as many of you probably know, um, Gary Gorelli and I will be doing the Good Drugs Gone Bad <coughs> presentation tomorrow at the library at 6.30 p.m. So I would definitely encourage all of you to, to really come and listen to this presentation because it's applicable to everyone. It has implications for everybody and their families, whether you have kids or you have elderly uh, parents that use prescription pain medications. Um, it's not boring at all. You won't sleep through it. Um, and it's not terribly long. And we will have time for questions and answers. Um, this is a partnership between Janesville Mobilizing for Change and the Milton Youth Coalition. So I hope to see some of you there. Excellent. Any other other persons reports? Okay, I have just a couple of little things. Um, first, to kind of glom on, there's been a, a little bit of a splash now lately about heroin and other drugs in Rock County. And obviously, we all recognize uh, from what we went through several years ago that that's a very real issue um, in our communities uh, with our youth, but also with our adults. Um, the city of Milton has been extraordinarily proactive. We were the first uh, prescription drug drop box. Um, uh, I hope that in the future we'll continue to lead on those issues. But um, there are serious problems facing our county, and Milton has always been uh, happy to lead on finding solutions. Um, Jerry's probably going to mention it too, but we did have our meeting with uh, Secretary Gottlieb from the Department of Transportation on our um, uh, request for Business 26, additional signage, access, and all of that. Um, uh, updates went out to the council, um, so certainly you're all aware of that. But for the public, uh, it was a very productive meeting. Had a chance to talk with both the Courier and the Gazette about it. We also issued a statement to both. Um, we uh, um, are still holding our breath a little bit to see what the delivery will be on some of the things that have been agreed to and promised. But uh, in the short term, at least, I think uh, the signage situations will be drastically improved. Um, in the long term, uh, the state uh, DOT staff agreed that an engineering study of the bypass and its impacts um, judged um, so that hopefully that project can work more effectively and efficiently over the long term as it is a 40 to 50 year uh, roadway um, will be something that we'll engage in. Uh, we believe, uh, Jerry, myself, the business community, I'm sure all of you as a council, that there was um, probably a better way to have designed that bypass, perhaps a more expensive way, uh, perhaps a way that would have been more difficult, um, but certainly a way that would have served the citizens and the businesses of Milton and those who are seeking to find us. Our meeting uh, last week was certainly a step in the right direction. We'll see what the uh, delivery is on the, the items that we agreed on. Uh, we did talk about the access issue on the five acre parcel um, over on the 59 corridor. Uh, the state believes they've uh, conceded quite a lot. The developer believes they should concede a tiny bit more. Um, and we as the city have done what we can do at this point. We have brought both groups uh, as close together as I believe they are going to come. Uh, that project is certainly something that I hope uh, we can find a way to make happen. Because as you all know and as you'll hear over the next several years, the city uh, will bump up against our levy limit despite having reduced operational spending each of the last three years and constantly found ways to be more efficient while maintaining our effectiveness and service provision. Because of the levy restrictions, we will bump up against our levy limit in three to four years uh, unless we grow value within the city. And that value has to be outside TID districts. This is a $3 million plus project that exists outside the TID district. That doesn't happen. Uh, very often. It would provide immediate property tax relief and give us more room to work with in the levy. Uh, it's incredibly important and it's a priority of, of ours and I know all of yours to make that project happen. Um, we'll be talking a little bit more um, in, as it, in the next process about um, signage. We're also going to be looking into um, ways to utilize technology more efficiently. Um, partnering uh, hopefully with the chamber and other organizations, uh, local businesses, to utilize not just maps and road signs, but also identify opportunities to make sure our listings are up to date on Google Maps and iMaps uh, and other programs, um, so that when people do Google Piggly Wiggly in Milton, they don't, as they currently do, get Piggly Wiggly in Edgerton on their Google Maps. Um, everyone can go ahead and Google that, and I guarantee you it's true. Um, I will be missing the May 20th meeting, as I already talked about, and I was going to mention something about signs code, but uh, Jerry will probably talk about that, and he has already. Staff report, city administrator. Uh, just a quick follow-up on the DOT thing so that everybody knows what the next step in that process is. 
As the mayor had indicated, it was a very productive meeting last Thursday. I want to publicly thank uh, Representative Jorgensen and Senator Cullen for facilitating that for us. Um, in addition, I think there was certainly some help from the mayor uh, with respect to writing Governor Walker's office because within 72 hours, DOT staff had called us for a meeting in advance of that meeting to find out exactly what it is that we wanted and how we would get that going. So. Um, the next step in the uh, pursuit of a business highway 26 designation is for us to meet with uh, the town of Milton and a Rock County representative. Uh, so Ben Koopman from the Rock County Highway Department, uh, town chair, <coughs> and I and the mayor will be meeting this Thursday at 9 o'clock. We'll go through the systems and the processes as required by statute. It's an informal process to petition for a business highway 26, uh, but the DOT has guided us through that process. There is a letter that we've uh, drafted that uh, all the council would see. Uh, we would need to get some coordination from the other two units of government because the business 26 would go through both Rock County and the town of Milton. Uh, so uh, they would have to um, conceptually agree to it and then a map would be drawn up from DOT of that uh, proposed business highway 26 um, and then eventually subject to a DOT administrative review. Uh, and so that's how that process would work. Um, I will be honest, there's a lot of things that the mayor comes to me and talks about in my office from time to time, day to day. I, I considered this at first kind of a Hail Mary um, for those that follow, you know, the game of football. And um, I'm optimistic that there might be somebody on that other end that may catch this one. So, um, but again, it will depend on what the delivery is uh, and what the DOT is able to do. So there's still a few more uh, steps in the process. Um, the signage things, um, they were very cordial and very responsive to our requests. And they're going to come back with a signing plan within the next two weeks. Uh, with respect to the access issue, there does need to be an appraisal done on the access because the DOT paid money from the property owners to acquire that access. That appraisal was ordered and actually conducted last week. It takes about three weeks on the turnaround. I've communicated with the developer who is subsequently communicating with his end users for that parcel. Uh, and then once that appraisal becomes known to us, it will be shared with the developer and hopefully if all goes well at the June Plan Committee, uh, June Plan Commission, um, we would see a site plan from the developer um, if we can get this access issue worked out. Um, so the general public knows what was discussed was a right turn in only um, from Sunnyside Drive into that corner lot on Highway 59 at Sunnyside. Uh, and the developer is sh again sharing that with the end users, and we should anticipate a response by the end of this week or early next. Um, I also want to publicly thank our department heads. Um, all of them at some level are involved in this moving and facility transition thing. And all the rest of the work that we have to do doesn't stop because we're building a building and moving. And so uh, Michelle, Chief Labor, the support staff, Howie, everybody is doing a bang up job. And um, it's exciting now as it gets to the very end of this process, um, but it's also becoming very real in terms of figuring everything out from everything from the light switches and the sockets to the microphones that you're going to talk into to all that finite detail. Um, I'd say we're down there probably three days a week minimum figuring all the final stuff out. So, um, should Has be everyone been down there to see it? You really, should, you really should go down and just stop in. and yeah. They won't chase you around and make you wear a hard hat. But well, they might. They, well, they don't. They might. I, maybe um, they don't, they don't chase me and Jerry, but. Be aware when you step down, <laughs> it still is an active construction site. So Some of us are working during that time. <laughs> Pretty exciting plan. Two other things we want to mention. Fourth of July stuff, it's uh, going to be coming up sooner than later. Uh, there will be the annual uh, Guns and Hoses softball game, and there will also be, in addition to that, a City of Milton versus School District of Milton softball game. So if any of you are interested in playing, I'm going to see if I can get Mr. Verwink to umpire it to give the city just a little bit of an advantage because the district is a slightly bigger employer than the city is. Um, and the proceeds of that, uh, we're going to be meeting with the Milton Youth Coalition Board of Directors tomorrow. It will be a fundraising event for the Milton Youth Coalition. So uh, four community teams, two good games, one great cause is kind of the theme that we're looking at promoting it for. And if any of you are interested in playing, please shoot me an email. It's big softball, small field, not a lot of running. Um, so we're, we're excited about doing that. If we can find an umpire, I can still play. You can still play. Yeah. And important to note, we, we guarantee a city victory at that, <laughs> uh, at that game. So How that, we that, that's a promise. All right. That's it. All right. Uh, public works.
really. <laughs> and, uh, and scrap collection's been going, you know, pretty good. We're still collecting stuff that people want to. So, so otherwise, just regular stuff. So, how much how much scrap would you say you've picked up? Oh, it's, it's going to be a few tons. I actually over the sent out the volunteer letters to people for some people down for cleaning up their backyards. A couple of them have called, and the one we're going to have a pretty good haul from. So that's <laughs> nice. But we'll, we'll get the tons all added up and show you when we're done. So. Great, Chief of Police. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be up to full staff July first. We met with Officer Breckling, and she's returning then. So then we'll have our full 11 officers working and hopefully back to business as usual, but it'd be about a nine month uh, period where we were scrimping and saving and filling shifts. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. And the boards are running good. Good, good. All right, library, joint fire, city clerk. Sorry, I'm trying to That's okay. Okay, um, reminder, as the council knows, all the alcohol licenses are due May 15th. So far, I've gotten about three. Three, there's about 150 out there, and that includes all the operators. Normally, we have them reviewed uh, the second meeting in June. I'm going to try to have them reviewed the first meeting in June so we can have the licenses made and have them picked up earlier than later. Normally, they're picked up the last week, and we're kind of moving that week. So I told all of them, I said, I will try my hardest to keep them on my desk, but I may not have a desk one of those days. So we're hoping we could push them to get them going earlier. So it's a big thing for moving. I just realized I still have to clean out this back room. So it's, uh, it's never ending. Thank you. City Treasurer. Item 8, President Ruink. Consideration of a motion to convene into closed session pursuant to Wisconsin <laughs> statute section 19.851E deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public <coughs> funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session and section 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel for the government body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved, reason vacant, L or vacant land listing contract with Mears and Associates. That's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll take just a